Good morning, and welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living, Sarasota. Whether you're a member, a regular attendee, or you've just found us, we want you to know that we're here to support you in finding a personal relationship with the God of your understanding and in discovering what you already know. My name is Jim Grove, a licensed spiritual practitioner here at the center, and I greet you with namaste. Namaste is Sanskrit, and it means the divinity in me recognizes and honors the divinity in you. Let's begin by affirming our vision and mission statements. The words can be seen on your screen. Please feel free to read aloud with me. First, our vision. Empowering spiritual growth as a loving, inclusive, worldwide community. And now our mission. We teach science of mind principles and other life-affirming spiritual truths. We explore, we learn, we grow, we connect, honoring all paths to God. We offer in-person and online weekly services, classes, workshops, affirmative prayer support, and other spiritual tools. We create opportunities for joyful social connection, community outreach, and service and we celebrate the awakening of our innate spiritual magnificence. Just a quick reminder that our center's annual meeting will be held via Zoom following the service on Sunday morning, March 27th at 11.30 a.m. I'll have more information for you about that during the announcements after today's message. Now, as we prepare for our time of prayer and meditation, I invite you to relax, Close your eyes, take a deep cleansing breath, and go within as Fawny Frost and Bob Teasdale set the tone for us with a song entitled All Is Well by Karen Drucker. Is well 
in this present moment. And I take as my affirmation these words from the book of Psalms in the Bible. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. In fact, each day is a new beginning and an opportunity to embrace life, which is God in expression. My attitude helps determine my happiness, so I see and find reasons to feel and express joy. I am filled with enthusiasm for everything that is mine to do. I am uplifted as I release concerns about the disturbing things going on around me, replacing them with gladness for the realization of spiritual truth. Gathering with friends or family, I delight in our connection. Joy is a spiritual gift I can access anytime as I recollect my happiest experiences and affirm more to come. My joy finds its expression in my laughter, smiles, and the twinkle in my eye. My cheerful attitude touches minds and hearts. As I share my joy, others are uplifted and invited to do the same. I am joyous, knowing and expressing God at the point of me. In gratitude, I release these words of truth, confident that they are even now manifesting as the joyful experience of my life. And so it is. I'm so honored and delighted to introduce our guest speaker this morning, Ron Frost, whose message for us is a spoonful of humor. Ron is also one of our own spiritual practitioners and the husband of Fawny Frost, whose musical gift we're enjoying this morning. Ron has been beyond generous with his time, skill, and talent in making it possible for us to offer these online services for the past two years during the pandemic. We simply could not have done this without him. Ron is a leadership consultant, motivational speaker, and as a sales and master life coach, he's founder of Positive Momentum Coaching. And he's also author of the book, Getting Unstuck, Nine Keys to Creating More Prosperity, Fulfillment, and Joy in Your Life. But before we hear from Ron, Fawny and Bob are back to sing Optimism is Contagious by Howard Payne. Welcome, Fawny and Bob. Optimism is contagious. Sing loud and sing a song. Optimism is contagious. Pick it up and pass it on. Hope is a place where one smiling face can make a difference. Where positive messages dance past the edges of time it's a ripple it's a rhythm it's a movement it's a beating of drums you can't help but move to its music when it comes optimism is contagious Contagious. Pick it up and pass it on. Rocks can be smooth and tides can be moved by the moon. Armies disarm and snakes simply charm by a tune. It's a candle. It's a beacon, it's a comet, it's a constellation. Whoa, so let yourself go past in the glow of illumination. 
Optimism is contagious Say loud and sing a song Optimism is contagious Pick it up and pass it on Happy Sunday morning, Center for Spiritual Living, Sarasota. I want to thank you, Jim, for that wonderful introduction. And wow, Fani and Bob really uplifting us with Harold Payne's song, Optimism is Contagious. And it certainly is. The more I smile, you smile, we all smile, the more we share our joy, our fun, and our laughter, the more we can transform this world in a beautiful and a positive way. So today's topic is called a spoonful of humor is the medicine. Why do we call it? Why is this such an important topic and why do we call it medicine? Well, it has transforming benefits, obviously, and it can help shift our consciousness. Now, today it's difficult. Many of us may have not been raised in environments that were fun or happy or free, or we, we can express ourselves and express our humor. We may have had very you know, strict guidelines growing up. But today we can still give ourselves permission to, to share our, our humor as well as enjoy humorous moments and look at that the funny things and the humorous things within life because they're really all around us. And at the same time, you know, we've got plenty of us are probably saying, well, you know, I, I don't know if I can do that because I, we just came through you know, a couple of years of a, of a pandemic. There was loss of life, loss of loved ones. You turn on the TV. And of course, we see division, we see conflict. Well, part of that is the way things are happening. But what we can do is we can be mindful is, is what cosmic agents of divine change, we can raise our vibration. Because essentially, whether we look at this from science, quantum physics, or spirituality and metaphysics, we're basically vibrational beings living in a vibrational universe. And as we start to shift our vibration into la love, laughter, joy, and that freedom of expression, we are creating a benefit for all of humanity. And I know, I mean, I, I know there's a lot of humans that are compassionate, and so am I, but compassion understands the problem, but doesn't stay at the level of the problem. This true strength comes from what Ernest Holmes says is being able to turn away from that, that problem and being able to see and anchor the truth, the love, the light, the happiness, the, the peace, the freedom, the health and well-being for all and for everyone on the planet. And as we do that, it's beneficial for ourselves as well as our, our circle, our small circle of community, but it's also a benefit to, to humanity. In many words of wisdom that, that we share, here's a few quotes one is from Milton Berle, laughter is an instant vacation. Yes, it is. It's that break. It's also a means of being able to, to surrender, to surrender, even when life isn't going the way you expect it to. Perhaps it's going even better, but laughter, if we go into laughter and laugh at those little moments, it's an instant vacation. Mark Twain, humor is mankind's greatest blessing. 
And here's one from Bernie Siegel, Dr. Bernie Siegel, author and a great speaker. The simple truth is happy people generally don't get sick. So if you want to live longer, feel better, raise your vibration, become a more humorous, conscious being, see the humor, live the humor, and you will generally not get sick, become happier. There ain't much fun in medicine, but there is a heck of a lot of medicine in fun. That's from Josh Billings. And here's one from Ernest Holmes. You can attract only that which you mentally become and feel yourself to be in reality. And I would definitely emphasize that word feel. We are feeling beings and the more we can feel joy, feel love, feel laughter, feel humor, the more we can be a benefactor of that ourselves as well as uh, those that are surrounding us. We can be the change that we wanna see in the world. And here's one from Patch Adams. The most radical act anyone can commit is to be happy. Well, there's other reasons why joy, happiness, laughter, humor is important. There's been science that has researched that, you know, we, we can't hold a negative thought while we're in humor. When we're in, if you're in the middle of, of laughing, you can't be complaining. It just doesn't work. And we know, we know that. So as we shift our state, then we're not only benefiting that, but we're, we're feeling better about that. The health benefits such as uh, lowering the reduce of the stress producing hormones such as cortisol or raising the amount of uh, feeling, feel good hormone, hormones such as dopamine. And it relieves pain. It raises, actually, it raises our immune system. It strengthens our immune system. It improves our blood flow. As well as it improves our connection with others. Uh, there's been some research that when we put you know, people together, then they feel more, more joy. They say it's like 30 times more joy when we can actually be laughing with others then when we're by ourselves, we could probably even have the best joke book, but it's just not going to be as funny as when we're actually sharing humor with, with others. And incidentally, during this whole COVID uh, pandemic, uh, there has been the growth of something called yoga, or yoga humor or humor yoga. It's been created out of uh, India and it's gone worldwide. It's actually just people just they just get together and they just start laughing. Well, with the pandemic, people are getting on Zoom and to see these, you can actually go to YouTube and watch these videos. They just start laughing. One person chuckles, another person chuckles. There's no joke. There's just, there's nothing that, and it just is infectious. And then the entire screen of all these little squares of all these people are laughing and it's a form of meditation. It's a form of raising vibration. It's, it's it, energetically, it's a form of prayer as we do this. And so that practice, and you can check it out. It's that you, um, it's humor yoga or laughter yoga or whatever. Just Google those words and you'll find all about it. And just probably one that you can sign up for and, and try it out. Just being able to do that will make ourselves feel better. There's also a study that came out of the Australian National University by two professors, David Chang and Liu Wang. And what they discovered, it was a very simple experiment. They, they discovered that focus and attention and creativity got better when somebody was in a state of ease, somebody, somebody was relaxed and feeling joyful. And so what they would do is they had students, random numbers, uh, they had a control group, and then they had certain uh, students that actually what they did was they put them for 20 minutes watching on YouTube, basically funny cat videos. That's all it was, funny cat videos. And then afterwards, they would go back into their project and they would find out that they would get the project done and it would come out much better. It would be more creative. Uh, they would be in that state of flow and they got it done in a shorter amount of time. So if you're ever feeling writer's block or you're just feeling that whatever you're working on isn't working, Maybe just give yourself a, a comical break and go over to YouTube and, and start watching some funny cat videos. 
So what can we do? What can we do to raise our vibration? Well, there's some basic things I think that are, are true that help us. And one of the very first things is giving ourselves permission. You know, we don't have to seek permission from anyone else to, to be a little funnier, to be a little goofier, to start to laugh at life's uh, little things that, that maybe, maybe go wrong, but in some ways, maybe, maybe actually go better. I remember Darren LaCroix, who is a uh, Toastmaster, and also he won the world champion of uh, public speaking, and he's a very humorous person. And he said the, the moment he got up the courage to walk up to his dad and tell him about his life career choice, um, he, you know, he said, Dad, I, I, I want to be a comedian. I want to be a stand-up comic. And he said his dad lowered his newspaper and looked over his glasses. He said, well, son, now that's funny. And, and when he tells that joke, everybody starts laughing. But the truth is we don't need anybody else's permission. We just need to be, be intentional about that ourselves. And one of the ways I would say is, is to just kind of laugh at life's little things. The things that we, we, we thought were going to go a certain way or maybe just didn't, you know, in many cases they, they worked out better than expected. We just didn't realize it. I remember one time, when Fani, you know, my, my wife is a musician and she's got a business and she schedules these singing gigs. And one time where we we're on Route 41 at a stoplight in Fort Myers and she gets a call and I could sense that something wasn't right. And as she gets off the call, basically she shares that this gig that she had that was two weeks from that date, two weeks from that date into the future that um, somebody called and canceled. And nobody likes to get canceled. But ironically, we no sooner got to that, the very next traffic light and her phone rings. And here is a, another, a totally different person asking for that same exact same date and willing to pay $100 more. And so as we laugh at even those things that we don't understand how they play out, but they, they are those divine moments where synchronicity just kind of works in our favor. And by raising our vibration, we're going to see and be aware and be more conscious of those moments of synchronicity. The other thing is, as you've ever watched a movie, have you ever sat in a movie and then at the very end, you're like, I'm, I don't want to get up because the credits are rolling because you're expecting what's called bloopers. Well, bloopers are those mistakes. And, and so, again, laughing at even those things that we would call mistakes. I had a good friend and I, he wrote a book, uh, his name is Hector, he wrote a book called uh, Why Am I Not Moving Again? It's about managing distractions in our life. A very, very good book. And so I decided I wanted to interview him and I tried to get everything perfect and I got the, you know, I had two camera angles, I had the lighting set up, I had already put together the questions that I was going to ask and the entire um, interview was going to be a 10 minute interview. And honestly, you know, most times when I do an interview, there's the start, there's the stop, there's the edits. But we sat down and when Hector and I connected about his book and I started asking him questions, everything came out perfectly. We were done exactly in 10 minutes and I was starting to pack up my cameras and Hector goes, well, I would like to sit down and do some bloopers. And so anyways, we did it. We had the funnest time just doing facial expressions and goofy things on camera. It never, it never got shared on YouTube. It never got, you know, put on the back end of, of his um, interview, but it was a funny, funny moment. And believe it or not, I, I probably remember that more than I remember the actual, the actual interview. So feel free to be goofy, to allow yourself to express. And then also intentionally do things like watch a funny movie or go out and watch a comedy show. This can greatly benefit you and get you away from the stress. Unplug from, from whatever it is that's maybe um, being heavy on, on your heart or heavy on your presence and intentionally start to feel joy by watching a funny movie or, or anything that would be, uh, make, you, make you laugh. There's a great book called Anatomy of an Illness, written by author Norman Cousins, 
where back in 1964, he had an illness, I think it was a life-threatening Ill illness, where his body was unable to produce collagen, and he got somewhat paralyzed. And he was hospitalized, and he actually asked the, the nurses to bring in a TV and turn it on so he could watch the Three Stooges. The Three Stooges, and I think it was Candy Camera and, and one other one. But he sat there, and all he did was laugh. And the doctors were in such amazement that actually he healed himself through laughter. It's an amazing book. It's called Anatomy of an Illness. And I, I would recommend reading that. Laughter, as, as Norman Cousins uh, shares, is truly what made him to, to be able to recover from the disease that he, that he had. The last thing, or the other, one of the other things is actually being intentionally around those people that we know that are funny. You know, we're told that our, our consciousness is affected by the, the 10 closest people within our life. You know, our, our vibrational consciousness, our financial consciousness, our beliefs. And, and we can also do this around purposely being around those people that we know that just love to crack jokes, that make us laugh. And I know even in this center, just I miss some of you because having been with you and, and, and just seeing your smile and, and, and the little jokes and things, that humor, I just love that. I just love being around that laughter. And since we've been a little bit apart, it's been struggle. So in my own life, I, I intentionally have to, you know, purposely be around people that make me laugh. Years ago, I, I graduated as an engineer. And I don't know if any of you are engineers. My, my dad was an engineer. My, my older brother fell in that same technology um, education. And so I went in the area of ed engineering. Years later, I went to, to sales and, of course, personal development and everything else. But it was really dry. It was it was difficult. Nobody really cracked a smile. And we had these things called cubicles and we were under fluorescent lights. And I just, I mean, I longed to walk to the water cooler to maybe smile to somebody in the hallway as I go there. It just felt stale. And we had these long, boring, strict, um, intense, things called meetings. I, I just, that's what corporations do. They get together and they have meetings. And I know, I remember what we had hired this person. He was an electrical engineer. His name was Mark. And he was very witty. He had those play on words. Uh, he was a little bit like what I would call the geniusness of a Robin Williams type of person. And you'd have the, the chief of engineering uh, that would be running the meeting and the seriousness of, of all these problems that we got to solve. And there was Mark sitting across the table. And as you look at him, you'd like, he's got this half smile and you could see those wheels turning. And he would, he would say something. It was just, whether it was, again, the simple play on words or something funny and everybody would crack up. Well, with Mark's presence, it shifted everything. It, it made people open up and speak more. Some people who were silent and afraid to even just talk. Other people would, would say something funny. The meetings went a little longer, but we got into that energy of solving the problems. We ended up getting into the solution, becoming a more solution mindset because we were at ease and we weren't under the tension of the things such as deadlines and stress and, and pointing fingers and things that happen typically within that environment. So, and I ended up inviting him to other meetings. You know, even though I was a mechanical engineer, he was electrical engineer, I just kept saying, can we bring Mark into this meeting? Because really he truly shifted the consciousness. Albert Einstein shares that quote that we can't solve the, the, the problem. We can't find a solution on, on the same level of consciousness that created the problem. And so essentially within that meeting room, in that environment, and everything is the environment, whether it's that meeting room, whether it's the, the greater corporation, the greater world, or even our bodies, it's all an environment. And then that vibration of, of humor, fun, love, and laughter is, that, is the gift that we can bring forth to heal, to heal ourselves, and to heal others and to heal the, the world. And so the last thing is, even in those, even in those most stressful moments, there are those divine moments where God winks in a humorous way. I remember when I was traveling 
from Baltimore back to Florida. This was years ago. And I was in BWI airport. I believe I was in the, uh, the terminals right below the, the, the food court. And we're all waiting for our plane. But as you know, occasionally you get to these moments where your plane is delayed. And it was delayed first 20 minutes and then up to an hour. And then there was like a two hour delay. Everybody, everybody, as you looked around, there was a couple there that uh, obviously they, they were going off to vacation and they probably had to transfer and afraid of missing their next flight. Um, there is, you know, people rolling their, their, their eyes at every announcement. Um, there's a man, you know, long line up to the, uh, the counter where the Southwest uh, person was standing and shouting and wanting, demanding to be able to get on another flight. And what happened was there was an announcement and the announcement was uh, basically that we found another plane the, the plane that we we're supposed to have got stuck at its destination. They found another plane, but they're awaiting flight attendants and a couple of pilots. And just at that moment, of course, you know, the announcement was like, oh, we got another plane. And everybody's excited. And then when they said, but we're waiting for pilots, um, everyone's like, ah, you know, just at the moment, a seven year old or eight year old a little boy goes, my mom can fly the plane. She, she could get us home. My mom can do anything. And he starts standing up and trying to drag his mom and she was turning bright red. Everybody, everybody broke out into laughter. It totally shifted and changed what was the problem, what was the frustration into a moment of ease, of joy. And as we got on the plane and, and many of us probably fell asleep, I know I did, with a smile on my face, I feel like the whole environment of that plane as we drifted through the skies, even though we got in late, it's like life's journey doesn't always happen exactly as we expect it. But if we can enjoy those moments of fun, love, and laughter, those are truly the gems that help us not only on a, a beneficial level for ourselves, but allows us to raise our vibration and transform the, the world when we anchor in more love, more laughter, and more humor. I hope you enjoyed our message today. It's been wonderful with you. Hope you had a few laughs. Now here's Fani and Bob with a wonderful song called When You're Smiling. Thank you. smiling the whole world smiles with you when you're laughing when you're laughing sun comes shining through but when you're crying you bring on the rain so stop your sighing and be happy again keep on smiling Cause when you're smiling, the whole world smiles with you. When you're smiling, when you're smiling, the whole world smiles with you. When you're laughing, when you're laughing, the sun comes shining through. But when you're crying, When you're smiling, the whole world smiles with you.
Thank you, Ron, for that wonderful reminder that humor is also a spiritual quality. And Fawny and Bob for anchoring Ron's message so beautifully in song. Now, as we move into our time of offering, I want to let you know that here at the Center for Spiritual Living Sarasota, we're available to support you in knowing the power and presence of your spiritual essence. We offer prayer support, inspiration, encouragement, and opportunities for virtual community and connection. And we're so grateful for your generous financial support of this center that allows us to support you. There are three easy ways to share your offering. On your screen, you'll see our website, which is www.cslsarasota.com, where you can choose a couple of options. You can select the donate button, which allows you to contribute via PayPal, or by credit card, or you can mail a check to our address. You can also set up automatic contributions through your own online banking. And now I invite you to place your hand over your heart as you reflect on your gift, blessing it as you share it, and know this with me. My gift goes forth to heal, to bless, and to prosper, and the divine flow returns it to me, multiplied abundantly. And now please join me in our offering affirmation on your screen. I give thanks that I may share of my good, my love, and my support. Thank you so much. Do you need prayer support? I'd like to draw your attention to the green prayer request button. We invite you to use this feature to send us your request. Our five licensed spiritual practitioners, Kathleen Frankert, Ron Frost, Nicole Leeds, Sean Scanlon, and me are available to know and affirm spiritual truth with and for you in whatever challenge you may be experiencing. We're also available for one-hour spiritual coaching sessions by appointment. These sessions offer the opportunity to explore a deeper understanding and practical application of the spiritual truth that transcends your problem or challenge. For more information, Check our website under the staff link at the left side of the screen and then select practitioners. Here on our website, you can also sign up to receive our weekly email newsletter. Please also check out our Facebook page for posts about upcoming events. I have a couple of announcements for you this morning. As I mentioned earlier, our center's annual meeting will be held via Zoom after the service on Sunday morning, March 27th at 11.30 a.m. All are welcome. And if you declared your membership for 2022, your presence is vital as we'll be electing new members to our board of trustees. We'll also present a financial report, program updates, and some very special announcements. Your participation is always valuable, but especially at this time, after two years of meeting exclusively online. We've missed the joy of being together in community, and we're now exploring ways to once again meet in person. The Zoom link for the meeting is in our email newsletter, which can also be accessed at our website, www.cslsarasota.com. I hope you'll be with us on March 27th. It will be a joy to see and hear one another. Next, our Spiritual Living Circle meets via Zoom every Wednesday evening for one hour from 7 to 8 p.m. to discuss an article from the current month's Science of Mind magazine. This week, we'll be discussing the article by Reverend Dr. Dennis Merritt-Jones. 
in the March issue entitled, Are We Having Fun Yet? This is a wonderful no-cost opportunity for spiritual development and social connection with other like-minded individuals. If you'd like to participate, please email me at the address shown on your screen, and I'll send you the Zoom link, article, and discussion guide. Now, as we conclude this sacred time together, let us move forward into the week ahead in peace and love and joy. I invite you to listen or join in singing our closing song, Let There Be Peace on Earth. Thank you for being with us and have a great week, everyone. Happy Sunday morning, Center for Spiritual Living, Sarasota. And right now, many of you are probably laughing. Ron, what is that on your head? All is well, I can rest. Well, it's a, it's a 1099 wig I bought off Amazon. I was hoping to be a little funny, a little goofy this morning, but... way too hot, way too tight. And with your permission, I'm going to shed this and deliver the, the rest of my message with, uh, with, with my, my normal bald head.